There are five major differences between the Legoff technique and sleeve and bypass. The first of these fundamental and highly significant differences is the conservative nature of the technique. Indeed, for the Legoff technique, everything is conserved. The esophagus is conserved, the stomach is conserved. Everything is highly conservative. It's a conservative technique. In contrast, for the sleeve, since about four-fifths of the stomach is cut, it's a non-conservative technique. You don't fully keep your stomach when four-fifths of it has been removed, so you've lost your stomach for life. For some patients, from the age of 18. As for the bypass, the act of cutting the stomach and creating a small stomach has a non-conservative aspect as well. Additionally, the duodenum is divided and connected to a small pouch. It's called a bypass due to the redirection. This is far from being a conservative approach. The second significant difference between the Legoff technique and sleeve and bypass is the modularity of the technique. As you know, the band is connected to a reservoir through a tube. And this reservoir is fixed between the muscles and the skin. This reservoir makes it possible to inflate the band to different degrees. Once the band is inflated, the diameter of the band is reduced, which reduces the passage of food, leading to increased satiety and reduced hunger. This modularity is done in radiology, starting from four to six weeks after the operation through a small local anesthesia. It takes 10 minutes to 15 minutes. The reservoir is punctured and liquid physiological saline is injected to inflate the band. This process is done in radiology to reduce the size of the band and increase weight loss. In contrast, in the sleeve, the stomach is removed by about four-fifths, and this is non-modifiable. It's done once in the operating room and can't be changed afterward. It can only be altered by re-operating on the patient. Similarly, with the bypass, the stomach is cut into two. A small stomach is created at the top, and moreover, the jejunum, by the way, bypass basically means a shortcut in English, and moreover, the jejunum, which is about 1 to 1.2 meters from the angle between the duodenum and the first part of the jejunum is cut. The jejunum loop is then attached to the top to the small stomach, creating a bypass. And obviously, this is non-modifiable. It is settled. The entire anatomy is settled. The third fundamental difference is the reversibility of the Legoff technique compared to sleeve and bypass. Indeed, if the band is removed, the person is back to how they were, almost as if they weren't operated on. In contrast, with the sleeve or bypass, when you remove about four-fifths of the stomach, you can't get it back. Similarly, bypass is also irreversible, or nearly so, due to the complex rearrangement of anatomy. The procedure is challenging to reverse in order to restore to the original anatomy, so the reversibility aspect is crucial in the Legoff technique, as it allows a person to return to their previous state by simply removing the band. The fourth major difference between the Legoff technique and sleeve and bypass is the reproducibility of the technique. For example, if there's dilation, it's entirely possible to remove the band and redo the same procedure above the dilation. This process is completely reproducible. In contrast with the sleeve, if the stomach widens, which is often a cause of sleeve failure, 
The only solution is to cut the stomach again, to reduce the size of the sleeve. Similarly, with the bypass, in case of failure that occurs one time out of two in the absence of a diet, because it's fundamental in the sleeve and the bypass to undergo diets, in the bypass, it's necessary to remove this important characteristic of the large stomach that has formed. And one of the only solutions in case of bypass failure is to go and place a band on the enlarged stomach in order to reduce its size. And thus, we return to a technique of band gastroplasty on the bypass, which is, to say the least, quite paradoxical. So the hyper-reproducible characteristic of the band, since we perform the same procedure, whereas in the other two techniques, this is much less the case or even not at all. The fifth major difference is the non-invasiveness of the Legoff technique compared to sleeve and bypass. The risk of complications is much lower in the Legoff technique than in sleeve and bypass. And if complications occur, which is extremely rare and infrequent, they are much less severe than in sleeve or bypass, where they can be extremely serious and even lead to operative mortality. In the Legoff technique, as seen, the complications are very low. With 1.2% dilation and 1.4% stomach erosion. These numbers are in comparison to the complications of sleeve and bypass, including fistulas. The rate of fistulas in sleeve is around 3.5%, with high risks. And also in bypass, with dramatic consequences in both cases which can lead to operative mortality and to death. In fact, in my technique, the Legoff technique, I have a 0% operative mortality in 17 years. The operative mortality in sleeve or bypass varies depending on the people, but it's between 0.5% and 1.5% in sleeve and bypass. This is a very high rate for people in their prime age, as the average age of patients is 37, often quite young, ranging from 18 to 25 years. It's important to note that we are not operating on elderly bedridden individuals. For me, the operative mortality in sleeve and bypass is a strong reason to reconsider these methods in comparison to the technique of gastroplasty with partial stomach folding.